When we're talking about something like Redux or React Context or GraphQL client-side caching, we're talking about this big store of data, right? Stuff that powers our application, stuff like what's the user's information and what should they see on their dashboard and what options are available to them if they go into their configuration settings. So these are all different mechanisms for storing and managing what we call in-memory um, data within a web application. But what exactly do we mean when we say in-memory data storage? And where exactly is this in-memory data storage? Where does it live? Is it in the browser somewhere, like local storage or index DB, uh, or maybe somewhere else? So uh, when we refer to in-memory data storage in the context of web development tech like Redux, React Context, etc., we mean that the data is stored within the memory space of the client application, which gets spun up in the browser. So every browser, whether it's Chrome, Firefox, Edge, whatever, delegates a portion of its memory space to the JavaScript runtime environment. So basically every browser's code includes something called a rendering engine. In Chrome, it's something called Blink, part of which is the, the V8 JavaScript engine. And in Firefox, it's this thing called Gecko, part of which is the SpiderMonkey JavaScript engine. Um, so both of these, V8 and SpiderMonkey, are responsible for compiling your JavaScript at runtime, that is essentially transforming JavaScript into something that the browser can understand just in time to be shown to the end user when they're using your, uh, your app. Uh, and each of these JavaScript engines have something called memory space, which is basically just storage for things like variables, functions, objects. In other words, all of the data that your application will actually present to a, a user in a web experience. And so when we use things like React Context and um, Redux, they're essentially carving out a space within that memory space to store stuff for your app. And all of this data stuff basically lives in a fresh instance of memory, which gets spun up by the rendering engine every time you create a new tab in your browser. That's why every time you refresh your tab, all of the data gets cleared out and re-rendered. The memory space gets basically wiped and uh, starts from scratch again. And that's what we mean when we say in memory, this memory space only exists for the duration of your browsing session in that tab. If you close the tab or refresh it or quit the browser or you know pull the plug and turn your computer off, the memory gets wiped. So each client application, in this case, it's your web app, gets allocated a portion of the system's memory by the browser. The client application, including its memory space, operates within the broader context of the browser environment, one part of which is the rendering engine, and other parts are like the DOM, the event loop, um, there's a bunch of browser APIs, stuff like that. So if we're working on an app, is there a way for us to view this memory storage? Well, sort of, not really, kind of, it depends. Unfortunately, there isn't like one single place to view all of your in-memory data storage as a generic browser implementation. However, each library or framework, whether you're using Redux or React or some kind of GraphQL library like Apollo, typically has some browser extension you can download to view your data. And browsers do provide developer tools that can help you look at memory usage specifically. So most browsers provide some kind of profiling tools which will let you look at how much memory certain portions of your app are using. And then you can use this to help identify memory leaks, which are usually just like processes which accidentally get left running and continue filling up your application's allocated memory storage until there's no more space left to fill up. 